Hi everyone, welcome to Migrant Doctor Mom, where we talk about everything to do with migrating and working overseas as a professional, being a mother and anything in between. So today I just want to talk about um, working and working as your first day as a professional in Australia. So uh, a little bit about me is we came to Australia on the 16th of January 2017 and after all the hassles of getting registration in place, getting my tags and everything in place, name tags, by that I mean name tags, in place, 20th, which was on a Friday, was my first day to work. Please look out for other videos to do with re registration, exams, and everything that has to do with migrating, first as doctors, and then I'll try and look at um, or, or engage other professionals so that you also learn what the processes are of coming to Australia, registration and all that. So here I was, first day at work. I had worked a lot, many years, seven years to be precise, in Kenya and I'd worked in a busy ED in a tertiary hospital and so it came 20th of January and I had to report for my first job. I will probably not say which department I was working or the hospital, but I must say uh, it was a day to remember. Presentation wise, I had my locks all done. They were held up, they were smart, freshly done. I had my best skirt on, my clothes shoes in, my above the elbow um, shirt, well ironed. Uh, just so you know, we don't do long sleeved below elbow here because of infection control we don't do ties and all that and so I, I i was well prepared clothes shoes above elbow shirt name tag hair done not long earrings like this one short studs ready to go so i rocked up and uh, <laughs> i must say that I, I am always i'm not the boldest of the people but i'm also not timid so I'm somewhere in between and uh, I always think that I can talk my way into anything. But that day, I didn't have words. My tongue was glued to the roof of my mouth. I was finding it e difficult to even say my name. I don't even know why I was that scared. I don't know why I was that scared. Whether it was to do with the fact that it was the first time I had worked in Australia, whether it was to do with the fact that I was working in an area that I had never worked before, whether it was because I knew I was going into the week, I don't even understand up to date. But for one reason or another, I could feel like my tongue was glued to the roof of my mouth. I could feel like I was so nervous. I kept saying, breathe, Anna, breathe. And I would like to which is my typical way of trying to calm my nerves, my nerves. So I introduced myself, obviously, got my hand over like usual, and I was expected to work. Fortunately for me, I must say, I'd done an observer position in a hospital, so I kind of had an idea of how the system works, a little bit of an idea, because obviously as an observer, you're just mainly observing and learning a thing or two. But there I was, and I was supposed to be now, you know like the rmo on duty and this hospital is is one in which you are on duty you get a lot of help but most of the time you are the one on the ground so like i was saying i'm not the boldest of the people or i'm not the most timid but i can get myself going in terms of like my husband um Richter and my good friend jackie would say like if you need something done let anna be the first one to speak and then if things go bad then my friend will step in and be firm so uh, I, for one reason or another that day i just couldn't get my communication going fear had i don't know where this fear was and what it was all about to be honest i look back and i just uh, wonder what was happening to me that day so back to the story um so a couple of bosses came in and it was all good because I had the handover, it was all good, I was good to go. But then one of the bosses came in. <laughs> and first and foremost, I 
I, I, I had confused their names. I'm not going to say the names because of obvious reasons, but then their names, there are two bosses who have almost similar names. Unfortunately, one's a male, one's a lady. So I was talking to the lady and thinking I was talking to the man because obviously these are new names, new country, new names. And <laughs> just taking you back, even, even how to pronounce the patient's names. So I, for example, I had worked with a friend that we used to call Murray. And I come to Australia and I see this name, M-U-R-R-A-Y. And I didn't even realize I'm supposed to call that person Murray. So here I was, my pronunciation of even the names, um, Murray. And everybody's like, what person is that? Murray. And then just to realize that, act, oh, Murray is, you know, so... <laughs> All, all, all different uh, things and a uh, few things that can make you, you know, be a bit on your edge or, or a bit nervous. So back to the story. So here I was uh, telling and presenting this patient, oh, this is so and so from Princess Margaret. And she stopped me and told me, Princess Margaret, what are you talking about? Princess Margaret was at children's hospital. Why is she coming from? Oh, my goodness. I was supposed to have said this lady is from Margaret River. So Margaret River is a place in Australia, southwest of Australia, a few, I think about three to four, I don't know, I'm not too sure, three to four hours from Perth. So I should have even said, I should have, she was expecting me to say, this is so-and-so from, Mag oh my goodness. And she went on and on and on. And I was like, what have I gotten myself into? Why am I even here in the first place, you know? And to be honest, those are some of the things that can um, people don't understand. People will not, you know, different people will not even know that it's your first day, your first job. They will not care that you do not understand the system, but that should not deter you from coming out to work and looking forward to coming to work. With time, all these things become better. I mean, with time, you will learn to know the places. You will learn to understand when somebody tells you they're from Kali, you know, they're a bit far out from the city, or when they tell you they're from... With time, you, you, you understand how the systems are, how different doctors want things done. And to be honest, um, it was a difficult day for me that day. But um, I actually came to like the department by the time I was leaving. We were best not really best of friends, but we were like, you know, at a good, good, good communication terms with this boss that I actually thought, for lack of a better word, probably a little monster, I would say. Um, so I will, just from that story, I want to share some tips, some tips that you can use for your first day at work. Trust me, it will not be the same across board. You will get lovely bosses. You will get people that don't care that it's your first job. They don't care that you're trying to adjust, that you don't even have a home yet. You're living with somebody. People that will not even understand that, you know, maybe you're working through different, you know, life situations, being extremely new in the country, being your first job, um, trying to get your footing. But nonetheless, things will get better. And nonetheless, you have to sail through and you have to be successful. And like I always tell people, including my own children, when you're working in a, a different, when you're working as a migrant, you have to be above average. You can't just be a, average. You have to be really good at what you do. You have to strive to make an impression and that sort of thing. So some of the tips I want to share is... Um, Things like my first biggest tip is presentation. How you present yourself will leave impressions. We all know that first impressions last long. So endeavor to present yourself in a way that you want to be remembered. I remember, um, and I always say, people in Australia don't, you know, like whatever you wear doesn't really matter. I have bosses who come in, especially during summer in shorts. And some of the shots are above knee shots. The bosses will come in after gym sessions in the morning and they'll go see patients. And that's all good. But for me, I feel like for your first job, 
you still need to be presentable. You still need to, because that's what people will remember. With time, people will realize you're actually a good doctor. You're actually a good good worker. They, people will actually realize she's not too bad to work with. She's good at what she does. But before you get to that level of where people are comfortable with you, you still need to impress, unfortunately. Dress up to the best, to what you would consider decent. Dress up properly. Remember your above elbow. You don't want to your day one, you're rubbing shoulders with infection control. You know, you you, you want to, to come with closed shoes if you're working in a clinical area or like a factory setting or something like that. And you want to stay within limits which, uh, which, which are acceptable and which are presentable. And hopefully with time, once people realize and know who you are, you can loosen up a little depending on the culture of the place that you're working at. My second tip is have a rough idea of how the organization works. And, uh, you know, um, by this I mean have an idea whether, whether you're working in the industry area or you're working in the medical field or you're working in a food store, like let's say IGA, have an idea what they stand for. Obviously, you'll have gone through their mission and vision as you prepare for the interview and all that. And I'll probably cover that in another video of how to prepare for interview and how to present yourself for an interview. But uh, uh, while you're there for your first day, have an idea of how the system works. Like for me, being a doctor, working in a public versus a private institution, having an idea of how you refer patients and stuff like that. And sometimes you may not be able to know these things, but and that's why I always recommend to my friends and colleagues, it's good to try and do what we call an observer period. By an observer period, I mean you, 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 you apply to a hospital and you let them allow you to come in and see how the system works, see how the juniors do referrals, see how people talk to consultants, see how people do handoff. If there is no observer position, let's say you know that you'll be starting in five days time, ask your, your, your admin and see, can I come in two days prior? Or does the hospital provide orientation, whether it's a, as a paid orientation or not, offer to come in and see how people do things. You don't want to be to be on your day one or your first week and you completely are clueless of how the system works. I think that will just increase your nervousness, that will increase, you know, your, your, your looking over your shoulder, am I doing the right thing, am I not? And to be honest, being your first job, you're probably going to make a few mistakes, but, but you want to start on a good footing. The third thing is try, the third tip is try and know who's in authority. And this, I will be very honest, is for nurses, obviously, it will be who is your coordinator for the day or who's your NAM, like your nurse manager and stuff like that. For doctors, it would be who's my registrar, who's my consultant, which consultants, you know, want to be told about their patients, everything, and which ones are, are, are going to, to allow you to sort of manage a few things a little bit more and bring them on board and tell them, look, I've done one, two, three, four. Is there anything else you would want me to do? I think knowing that um, and, and knowing who to call will reduce your level of anxiety on day one because, you know, if you're met with something that is beyond your comfort, you will know that I need to speak to so and so. And this probably ties up with my number four tip, which is ask for help if you're unsure. If we are coming, and, and, and I was like that, coming from, uh, 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 you know, like um, where I used to work, sometimes, you know, people may not be happy if you call them at wee hours and stuff like that. But working in an environment uh, here in, as a migrant, you may find that people are acceptable to the fact that you need to call them and they are more upset when you do not call them when you have a sick patient or when you're in a situation that you need to just confirm. And sometimes it's all about confirming, should I do this or should I be speaking to so-and-so or and, 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 and small things like that. So being aware of the fact that there will always be somebody higher than yourself who's willing to help is one thing that will reduce your anxiety level. Look, look at me. I was worried day one. I'm like, how am I going to do one, two, three? Because it's an area that I'm not actively worked in. 
But that did not change the fact that I was still a doctor. I could do my initial, you know, history taking, management, clinical examination, come up with my differential, start up treatment. And obviously, if I don't know what next to do, then I would need to call somebody. I would need to call my next supervisor or my next boss and say, look, I've done one, two, three, and four. Is there anything else you would want me to do? And um, even for the young people who finished school and they've moved into Australia, even on a studying, you know, like, like a, a student visa and you found a job, let's say in, in IGA or you found a job as a support worker, be be uh, that person that will always ask for help you know like um not all the time i mean not over things that you can do or you just want to be seen to be asking obviously it's for things that you you realize you're not able to you're not able to do and there's somebody else that knows how to do you can easily just ask for help if you're unsure and my last tip is always remember that you're a professional Always remember that you're a, you're a professional. The fact that you've come in, it's your first job, and you've gone through the grueling exams. You've gone through the grueling, you know, like uh, registration um, processes. You've gone through an interview. You've done your selection criteria. They've shortlisted you. They've called you for an interview. You've smashed the interview, and now you have the job. As you go in for your first day or your first week, Remember that you are a professional. You, you, you are there by merit. Own it. Sometimes we are like thinking, oh, am I good for this job? Will I be able to do this? No, you have been selected into that position because you're professional. You have the skills they need. And, and as much as you may not be, the, you know, like know everything, you know enough to make you be somebody safe in that work environment. Um, and once you know that, you will go forth with, with, with boldness. You'll go forth and know that you can do this. Fine, you may not know how the system works. That's fine. Those are things that you're going to learn along the way. Everybody started somewhere. You may not know, you know, like referral systems. You may not know, um, you know, uh, dosages or the types of you know and all those things but there will always be a way that you can know and learn these things you will refer you will check guidelines and there are guidelines in this country there are policies in this country there are structures in this country where somebody will tell you if this has happened do this or if this is likely to happen mitigated by doing one two three so go there with boldness knowing that you are there by merit that you are a professional you're doing nobody you know like a favor you are going out to do the job that you're trained to do so um as i pen off i probably just want to say yes day one first week of any job is scary it can be daunting it can be all mixture of emotions but you got this um it will get better go in there with a good positive attitude rock up on time be willing to learn be willing to pick up things along the way be willing to take notes be willing to learn uh, how else you can improve yourself and know that you are a professional you are here by merit and things are likely to get better day by day as long as you put your heart into it. Won't you go out there and smash your first day and your first week at work? Bless you.